If ever you go to Chiang Rai in the far north of Thailand, the first things you will notice are these rather astonishing decorative street lights which stretch for about a mile either side of an elaborate clock tower. This clock tower was designed by Chalam Chai Kosipipa, who is probably Thailand's most famous living artist. After this was completed in 2008, Chalam Chai embarked on another project, Wat Rong Khun, known as the White Temple. This huge project is remarkable. It's a complex of buildings rather than a single temple and not scheduled to be finished before 2070. Everything is covered in these traditional flame designs. Wherever it's possible to put one, you'll find one. This one makes me think of glittering cake icing or fractal snow. Looks like a wedding cake, doesn't it? Its excessive decoration turns it, along with the clock tower, into a sort of oriental kitsch. Not that I have any problem with that. To his great credit, Chalom Chai insists on it being open to the public for free. In Britain, it would be £25 to get in and we'd have a children's theme park alongside. Neither is there any pressure to donate. People are allowed to donate if they wish, but the donation must not exceed 10,000 baht, about £200 or $300. This is to ensure that he retains control of the project without being influenced by wealthy donors. There's a bridge leading to it that crosses hell. The souls of the damned reach up to us to be rescued. Photography is not allowed in the White Temple, so I only managed to get a few details of the murals while the attendant's back was turned. I think Chalam Chai has a wonderful sense of colour. And I particularly like these stylized splashing waves. Here we see artists as they work on the murals. However, I'm not so enamoured with this. Or this. Harry Potter, The Terminator, Michael Jackson, Johnny Depp, Hello Kitty, they're all up there. These things don't do very much for me, and that's probably because I'm just a boring old fart. But I guess they are relevant to our time, and they will certainly act as a date stamp, if nothing else. I have been to the White Temple twice. The first time, just before it was damaged by an earthquake on the 5th of May 2014. The second time was after the earthquake, in March 2015. There are huge cracks on either side of the main entrance, and the painstakingly painted murals are badly damaged. It's very sad to see this, but this is a long-term project and the earthquake damage is only a minor setback. And here's Kung Fu Panda. What a pity the earthquake didn't take the opportunity to destroy this as well. This, believe it or not, is the golden toilet claimed to be the most beautiful public toilet in the world.
If you wander off limits around the back, you'll find the main studio where all the sculptural work is done. I just love this. I've no idea what it is, but I love it. The sculptors here are working in clay, not to be fired, but to be cast in polyester resin or bronze. A mould is made from the clay, and then a wax copy is made from that mould. This wax model is then used to make the final bronze copy by the lost wax process of bronze casting. Here are some ingots of bronze. And here are the furnaces for melting the bronze. They are makeshift affairs made out of breeze blocks and corrugated iron and fired with wood. This is Chilam Chai himself. He's a cardboard cutout which makes it easier for him to get through narrow apertures. He obviously has a sense of humour which is no bad thing. You'd have to have a sense of humour to put Kung Fu Panda in your temple. Skulls on all the traffic bollards are an example of this. And this monument to the evils of drink looks rather tongue-in-cheek to me. It reminds me in a way of biker art or tattoo art. I don't know quite what to make of it. I'm full of admiration for a man who's dedicated his life to such a project. And I do like it for its eccentricity, but I don't find it to be a spiritual place. Whether it's the Hollywood Disneyland element, or whether it's the coach loads of tourists that come every day to see it, I don't know. But for me, it lacks a quality that many of the other temples have. I have been in a lot of Thai temples and there are many that I prefer to the White Temple. I admire him for his attitude, I admire him for his eccentricity. The world needs eccentrics with money to indulge themselves and create fantasies. And this could never have existed otherwise for future generations to appreciate. And when I start to think of it as a piece of art in its own right, then I feel a lot more comfortable with it. Back to the clock tower. At night it lights up, and at 7, 8 and 9 o'clock it plays the Westminster chimes, which makes it sound like a small mantelpiece clock. It will then proceed to sing to you, or play some stirring classical music, probably both, for about 10 minutes. Not at all ostentatious or attention-seeking, is it? But for all that, I love it. I'll leave you with this shaky piece of video.